Today I am really, really excited because this is my first ever brand new battery. I mean, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, but I always build my own batteries out of 3.2 volt cells. So when this company reached out to me and said, hey, can we send you this battery? Will you do a review and tell us what you think? I was like, yes, send it to me. I'm just incredibly excited. In fact, this morning when I was unpacking it, I felt like a kid at Christmas just ripping through the packaging just to get the battery out. Just incredibly excited. Why would you buy the battery? I mean, that's why you're here. Tell us about the battery. So my initial impressions are it feels like what a battery should be. Uh, the, it's a drop-in replacement size battery. Uh, I'm not going to weigh it or you know measure it. I'll link all that stuff below if you're interested in that. But it feels like a quality battery. Uh, it doesn't feel cheap. I mean, it's plastic, but um, it's the build quality is what I would expect if I was to go out and buy a battery. Let's talk about the numbers. All right, first of all, it's a Go Kilowatt battery. That's the company. It's a standard 12-volt battery. It's got 100 amp hour of capacity and 1,280 watt hours of energy. Pretty much standard battery. The top has got a um, LCD display. You can turn the battery on and off. It On this little LCD display, you can see the state of charge. You can see how much current's coming in. You know, all the standard stuff that you would expect. It This links to their product website there's actually no documentation that comes with this but um, that's fine because nowadays you just go online and look it up this is a link to their software uh, i already had software on my phone that i use but this is a uh, nicer it looks like it's a jbd uh, bms which i really like because i love those uh, those bms's uh, and i'll be checking out all that in a little bit um what else um so know. before I turn the charger on, there are some numbers I want to go through that are going to be important for people to decide whether they like this. Uh, they do recommend 14.6 um, charge voltage. I like 13.9, but uh, they do recommend the full 14.6 um, charge. They recommend 50 amp charge maximum. Uh, discharge is 100 amp, which is cool. 4,000 life cycle. Um, 10-year service life. It does have IP65 protection, so um, if you do need to use it in a marine environment, it looks like you're good. Uh, you can hook it up uh, 4P and S, 4S, so you can hook up 4 in parallel and 4 in series, so if you did want to do a 48-volt setup, you could do that. They are pouch cells, not pris um, prismatic cells. Uh, it's ABS flame retardant plastic uh, and it feels good i mean it, it's a nice nice case i don't know let's jump into it first thing i got to do is charge it up um, so i'll do that in a second this thing makes a little bit of noise you can't hear me so that's why i'm waiting the only thing i haven't liked so far is these um terminals are the ones that you use a phillips head and I, i'm not a big fan of that but so far that's the only thing i don't like about it um uh, i'm going to be running it through a standard capacity test a low c like a less than a uh, 0.2 C capacity test to make sure we hit these numbers and then I'm going to be running it through a uh, heavier load but I'm going to see if it hits that and can hold a 100 amp load for you know a while and make sure that it hits the specs and then I'm going to see how it does in an actual live off-grid system I have a small thing set up where I have a couple of solar panels and a small load that runs continuously in a storm shelter and I'm going to drop it in there and test it over a couple days and see how well it performs real world. So we're going to do the kind of the um, scientific tests where we test the numbers and then I'm going to put it in an actual live setup. So first thing, I'm going to charge it up. Um, it comes at 50% state of charge, of course, as they ship. I think that's pretty standard. The cells looked balanced, but at 50% state of charge, you can't really tell. If you have used this battery... Uh, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your take on it. Um, if you like this sort of content, of course, uh, make sure you subscribe and like the video. And this is going to go for a few hours, but I'll be back in a second and we'll run it through those tests. So I went ahead and I charged this battery all the way up to 14.6 per their specifications, just so I could give an accurate assessment of capacity. I wanted to be fair to them. While I was waiting for the battery to charge, I watched a couple other videos on people reviewing this battery. That was an older version of the battery from a couple months ago. And uh, 
they were actually were able to open the um, the box. So I went and took these little plugs out, and uh, I'm actually gonna do a teardown on this battery now because um, the build quality of their versions of this battery were was pretty bad. I mean, it was um, pretty bad inside. So I've already opened this up and glanced in there, and I'm gonna after this test, I'm gonna do a, a full teardown of all the components because uh, it is a JBD BMS and I think this battery does have a low temperature sensor in it so I want to test that because I, that's a huge difference the specs on their website say that this does not have low temperature protection so if it does that changes everything so I'm going to do that after I do this capacity test and uh, see um, if that's the case because uh, that that could um, fundamentally change everything because if you're an RVer and this can has low temperature protection that's just huge so first thing we're going to do is just do this low C test so the battery passed the capacity test it got 101.5 amp hours and 1283 watt hours so it passed it next thing I'm going to do is a load test. Uh, I wanted to do a bigger load test, but I realized that I only have a 1200 watt 12 volt inverter. All my other stuff is 24 volt or higher, so I can't do a big load test on it. Of course, on the other hand, I'm also now going to do a teardown. So, just in the video a little bit. I got to go with the flow. Let's turn this guy on. Oh, it is on. So, turn on a load. I'm going to um, turn on a space heater. We've got 580 right there. Turn it up. So we're at 900. That may be all we get. Let's see what kind of... So we got 83 going through it, so not what I wanted. So not much of a test, but it can at least do um, 80, 85 pretty easily. All right, let's move to the teardown. All right, so on to the teardown. I've already removed these little guys. I've actually already opened it up once, kind of glanced in there. My goal for this teardown are two things. First, to show that the build quality of this version of the battery is considerably better than what the build quality was just a few months ago. And then second, to see if that JBD BMS actually has low temperature cutoff protection because that will be really critical because if this battery has low cutoff and meets capacity and is Bluetooth and is you know 300 bucks um, whatever the price is I know it was somewhere around there um, this is going to be a battery that everybody should buy if it doesn't have the um, low voltage, uh, the low temperature protection, then that's a big deal. All right. So first of all, let's turn this thing around. You can see, originally the build quality was pretty bad. I don't know if you can see that, but they've replaced it. Now they have this better foam. I watched the video and the guy was pulling out like like packing styrofoam. It was just terrible. Battery was flopping around, flopping around, and it was just a big mess. This looks a lot tidier. It's much much cleaner. Everything looks really good in there. So they've improved it a ton. All right, it took some wrestling, but let's get this thing out now. The uh, build quality is considerably better if you look back at some older videos. It now has all of the standard um, high density, whatever foam that is. Um, and it's in there tight. I mean, it took me like half an hour to wiggle this some bitch out. So, it's not bad. I mean, there's not, looks like there's a little bit of separation between the BMS and that. There's some sort of tape on the corner. Of course, the whole thing's wrapped. These are pouch cells, so I'm not going to open up those. But it, it took some 
finagling to get this guy out. So it's in there pretty good. So if you have this in, a, and you can see the bottom's all glued. So if you have this in a in a mobile, uh, you know, setup RV or something, you should be good. One thing though is all of the connectors are screwed in. You can see that. Um, I that, that doesn't bother me, but that is something to consider if um, if you're concerned about that. They are definitely all screwed together. I want to get this foam out. Let's see if it is JBD. Yeah, that's definitely JBD. And it has a sensor on it. So on their website, they say this battery, the 12 volt battery, does not have low temperature protection. So I'm going to put a screen capture there so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's test this to see if it actually does. So you can see we're charging. We've got some amps coming in. Let's see if we can cool this thing down. You see we cooled it down and it stopped charging. This is a low temperature sensor. So that, I mean, that changes everything. That means you could use this battery in an RV situation. So if it's freezing, the BMS will protect the battery from being charged when it's freezing, which of course protects the battery from being destroyed. So um, that changes my everything about this battery for me. So let's see if it does it under hot. And you can see, put the heat gun on it, turned it off. So this battery has thermal protection both low and hot. And as you can see, it cools back down, it charges. Wow. Wow. Um, that That's just a um, game changer for me. I mean, this, that means this battery is perfectly acceptable. All right, then I'm going to put this thing all back together and uh, put it in my system and do my final test. So here it is, integrated into my storm shelter system. This is a small 12 volt system with a couple of panels. And uh, it's been working flawlessly, discharging the low C load and taking the charge of a couple of panels. And it's been doing this a couple days, perfectly fine. Very happy with it. So now for the recap. Well, it passed all of the tests as far as capacity. It did fine on the load test, and my load test was just limited because of me, not because of the battery. The teardown revealed two really important things. First, that the build quality is greatly improved from earlier versions, and it indeed does have thermal protection, both low and heat. So um, would I buy this? Yes. Is it as good as a Battleborn or an SOK? I don't know. I've never used one of those, but I would buy this battery. Uh, for the price, it really makes me reconsider building my own batteries. I mean, this is a $300 battery that's got nice cells, a great BMS. It's in a nice box. Uh, it's a great battery. So if you want to buy this battery, I have a link below with a discount code. It's uh, 300 and something dollars, I think. Uh, for the price, you just you can't beat it. Are there cheaper batteries out there? Yeah, but they're cheaper. This is a high quality, inexpensive battery with all of the features that you're gonna need. And it has a five year warranty. So I would recommend it. Um, I might buy some more of these myself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.